So then I was like, I could probably sell these online, but Dobby deserves to be free, you know? So here you go. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. So I have three kids under the age of four, which means I do like a ton of laundry. God, this is beginning to sound like a Tide commercial. <laughs> but one of the most annoying things about doing so much laundry is that we have like a ton of orphan socks. I needed some place to put them all. And because I'm me, I wanted to make something cute as well as functional. I came up with the idea of having our very own little house elf, Dobby, to catch all the socks. And if you watch my last video, I picked up a few baskets at the thrift store for this reason and I went and sculpted a little polymer clay Dobby holding the basket, maybe hung by his little toga thing on the wall. We'll see if I can figure that out. Uh, so basket-wise, I have three options. I've got this guy, which I like the size of it, but like might be a little wide. And then I've got this other apple basket, um, also, the the aesthetics of it are really good, but I don't know. This might be the one, but I found one that was kind of perfect because it says grateful all over it and it's got handles already on it, but that means I would have to make a larger Dobby because of how wide it is. And I don't think I'm prepared to do that. I don't think I have enough polymer clay and that would just take longer to do. So I think I might go with this one. But yeah, so um, barring any sort of major upset, <laughs> uh, I think this should be straightforward. I have a couple of things in mind that could be an issue, but um, I'm not gonna jinx anything by mentioning them now, so let's do it. I start out by making an armature out of armature wire and foil and then some painter's tape. And then I rolled out some clay with a clay pasta maker thingy and just started layering the bulk of the body. Now I probably should have used more clay for this process initially, but since I wasn't really sure of what I was doing because it's kind of new to me, I just start doing it layer by layer, and I mean, it did take a while. Since the body was looking super ape-like at this point, I decided I need to cut off some of the length of the arms. He does have long arms, but not that long. I had a ball of foil for the head, I was gonna sculpt it separately, but then I decided not to. I think just laziness and ineptitude. And then I kind of just start mushing more clay in to bulk everything out and then just smoothing it on as I go. And then I'm just blocking out all the major structures like the eyes and the chin. And then also, any musculature. Dobby is really sinewy and lanky, so even though you can see his muscles, they're really stringy, so that was kind of hard to figure out how to do. I just made a lot of lines <laughs> and then added and took away as I saw necessary. Obviously, I gotta add some pecs. Eh, it works. <laughs> I feel like a lot of sculpting is really just kind of like smoothing things until they look right. I don't know. I'm not classically trained in this. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Luckily, even though Dobby is a creature, he's kind of human-like, so I was able to reference my, I don't know, knowledge of human anatomy for this. There are some wonky bits, but I guess I'm gonna chalk that up to literary license. didn't think I would forget Dobby's booty, did ya? Not much there, but, you know, he's working with what he's got. And then I cut off Dobby's hands and feet, because Dobby has displeased Mistress. Also because I need to sculpt them separately. And then I took very little care shaping Dobby's ribcage, because I don't think they're gonna be seen. So... Mm -hmm. 
It was at this point that I realized that he was looking a lot more like Stewie Griffin instead of Dobby, so I needed to turn that American football head into a European football head. And add more of a muzzle. And then I added some placeholder ears that I was planning on going back in and defining those later on. So for now, they're just there to give me some structure. And then the nose. I did this in kind of a weird way, but it worked. adding even more chin so he can finally change pillowcases for mistress. In the blocking phase, you don't really have to get all the clay that you're gonna need because a lot of sculpting really is just adding as you go. Yeah, let's add some more nose too. And I know I need to add some eyeballs, so I made some little balls and went and baked those while I was working on the rest of the face. Continue to define the face and add some more wrinkles and then thicken up the ears. Now the eyeballs were done baking, so it's time to add some eyelids. Fun fact, when I finished the entire sculpt and painting, I realized that the eyelids weren't big enough, so... Enjoy me thinking that they were good enough while I was sculpting them. Well, regardless, I'm pretty pleased with it all. Polymer clay is pretty new to me, and I wasn't really used to how it doesn't stick the same way that other clays do. I had to apply more pressure than I'm used to, and like... Uh, I don't know. It was frustrating at times, but I had fun with it. Now adding some of those deep head wrinkles and a little nose picking. And now I'm really defining those ears. Honestly, they were kind of hard. I kept going back to them because they just didn't look the way I wanted them to. To finish up before going to the first bake, I had to make sure the basket fit and then do a wash of alcohol to kind of smooth everything out as best I could. Now he's back from the oven. Only a little battered and bruised. A few cracks I'm gonna fix. Now for the hands, the part I've been dreading the most. If you know anything about any kind of art, you know that hands are notoriously hard to do. I have a theory why, but I'm not gonna disclose it for fear of sounding like a moron. So the method I used was clay worms mushed into clay balls, and then futz around until it looks vaguely handish. The keen viewer will notice that I don't spend a lot of time filming the result. The feet were weirdly easier than the hands. I don't have a theory about that one. I made some trapezoids, and then cut out some toesies, and then mushed everything around until it looked like feet. This was one of those situations where carving away some of the clay blocking was a big part of revealing the final shape. As Michelangelo said, mush away some clay and then you have a foot. And then I fixed all the cracks with some liquid Sculpey and little bands of clay. It worked well enough. And on to making Dobby's lasagna dress. It took a bit of trial and error, but having draped a few terrible garments in my day, it was pretty simple when all was said and done. I just made a flat piece for the front, and one for the back and then measured against the model. Then to create the look of fabric, it just took a little bit of pushing the clay around to create wrinkles.
the sculpt is done and baked and it's time to paint it. I did a little bit of research on how to paint skin tones because I'm not all that familiar with painting polymer clay. <laughs> it took me down a weird little YouTube rabbit hole. I watched some people painting reborn dolls, which if that's your thing, cool, but uh, it's a little creepy and not in a way that I lean towards creepy, but um, so yeah, it baked pretty well. There's some weird spots that I might have to deal with. I need to smooth it out a little bit, maybe sanding it. And there's also like a crack or two and I don't really know what I'm gonna do about it. So I should have used a different Sculpey rather than the original Sculpey because from my post sculpting research, I found out that original Sculpey is not as strong as Super Sculpey. Something I know for next time. Another thing, off camera, because I am amazing at planning, altered the outfit a little bit just so that I could have him hanging against the wall. I'm really hoping that it's strong enough to do so, but we'll see. <laughs> so yeah, time to get started. I prepped my little canvas with a bit of smoothing with some fine grit sandpaper. And ever the victim to Instagram ads, I recently bought these Tam Tamu Magic Wand makeup brushes. Personally, I really love using makeup brushes as paint brushes. So this is like the most perfect debut of my little treasures. Might be kind of hard to see the color, but I started the skin tone with a basic beige. I really wish I had sprung for the flesh tone Sculpey. Hindsight. And a bit of rouge undertone in his rougey parts. I'm not really sure how much to explain here other than that I'm layering lots of undertones as per the guidance of reborn doll artists. <sighs> Most of these colors are washes, just to give variation to the beige base coat. I hope you enjoyed that interlude. But finally, I'm coming in with a darker wash to start bringing out the detail and shadowing. Of course, what would a sculpting YouTube video be without dry brushing the highlights? Honestly, my favorite part though. Painting Dobby's rags were the same story. Start with beige, add some darker bits, and then add some lighter bits. Rinse and repeat. Now to bring some life into these dead eyes. I made a bright green iris. And then I added a darker green rim around the edge and kind of stippled some browns and yellows in the middle too. Probably the easiest way to do the pupils with a Q-tip. 
I really hope you can't see how badly my hand was shaking. <laughs> And now that the eyes are done, I noticed that I still needed some darker low lights. So I went ahead and add them all around the face. And to make the eyes look extra big and wet, I coated them with UV resin. Ooh, fancy. The paint job was still getting really muddy and blah, so I just kept adding paint until I could paint no more. Would you like to see the final result? Too bad, you still need to see how I haphazardly attached the basket. Okay, good enough. Now you can see the final result. 